Hello friends, thanks so much for joining me today. We are working with the awesome Let's Stamp Together March 2022 kit from Scrapbook and Cards today. I love these. These are a bi-monthly subscription. They give you a different stamp from a new designer who's big in the industry. This month it is Becky Moore with Photo Play Paper and we have this gorgeous birthday themed kit. There are these lovely cupcakes, a couple of different sentiments to choose from, there is a stencil, you have um, a note from Becky there which is really lovely, um, and a whole sheet of die cuts that uh, you also get the magnetic sheet from Scrapbook and Cards today, as well as some, um, some sparkly bits to embellish. So I have three sheets of plain white cardstock here sized at four inches by five and a quarter. So that's what we're starting out with. I'm going to choose the first cupcake and it's the one with all of the flowers. And in this video, I want to show you what you can do with this set if you don't have Copics like me. I do not have Copic markers. I'm using the Stamp Market inks in this gorgeous color palette. I already stamped my cupcake using Stays on Ink. So it's an oil-based ink. I'm going to use a water brush and we are going to watercolor this cupcake with inks that we have on hand. You don't necessarily need fancy watercolors to make something look beautiful. One thing I really like to do is touch my ink to uh, my acrylic block and use that um, to get the ink off. I started with emerald green on the cupcake liner and I'm moving to fresh pink to color in all of the icing. I want a, a lovely, uh, it's like a pinky purple shade of icing. I'm really excited about the possibilities with this stamp because, you know, if you don't have Cobics, there's a lot you can do. You can use um, your watercolor pencils. Most of us all have water-based ink on hand though, which is why I wanted to show you this technique today. This is something that I use a lot. I'm using party pink first to color in some of those flowers and you'll notice here that I am barely using any water. I'm not pressing on that at all um, to because I don't want it to run. I'm using melon orange on the second set of small flowers and then citrine on the third set of small flowers. I'm also going to use citrine to color in the centers of the flowers and a little bit of melon on the yellow flowers. There's some other like bits along the outside that are kind of like petals sticking out. So I'm using party pink on those, the darker pink. So fun. Now one tip I have, once you let this dry. If you see some shading you want to do, you can always go back and add a little bit more. But I did this on watercolor paper as well. So you want to make sure that you use a paper that can hold that kind of water. I grabbed uh, a wink of Stella to add a little bit of sparkle to those flowers. And then I'm going to die cut the cupcake out with the die included in the kit. The next thing I want to do is create a background for this cupcake. So I'm grabbing a favorite die from Concord and Ninth. You can check out the link to all the products that I'm using in the video notes here. Um, this just creates a really nice scalloped frame for this and I really like that because it has the same kind of shape as the cupcake icing and it has a little stitched edge too so it makes it look really, really nice. I also want to go ahead and figure out where I'm going to place my sentiment here before I do any um, adhering because I definitely want to pop up my cupcake with dimensional adhesive. I'm going to grab some pink and instead of popping this up and die cutting it out, I'm going to uh, stamp directly on my card background. So we're going to do birthday in party pink and then I'm going to grab wishes to you to stamp that in melon. Now remember when you have stamps that are quite long it's best to lay them down and pick them up with your acrylic block rather than try to put them on the acrylic block. 
The next thing I want to do is add some more color up here and I want to use all of the colors from the stamp market that I uh, that I used in my cupcake when I colored it. So I cut quarter inch strips of all of those coordinating colors and I'm just going to run those horizontally behind that die cut. So I popped up my scalloped frame there behind the um, cupcake and then I'm going to pop up this card front and add it to the white card base so there's that little tiny bit of white frame. The last thing I want to do is add a little bit of sparkle, just three sequins. You can certainly add more to this but it's a pretty simple design and I wanted to keep it pretty and simple. So just a little pinkish purple, that emerald green, and a yellow at the top. Super fun. What a fun card, right? Let's move on to a second card. On this card, we're going to use the awesome stencil included in the kit to create a really fun pattern background. So I'm adhering my four inch by five and a quarter inch piece of white cardstock first to a piece of scrap paper. And then I'm taking that stencil and I'm adhering it down so it doesn't move. I'm going to start with the lightest pink, which is fresh pink in the upper left hand corner here. And I'm just ink blending. So this is another great thing you can do if you don't have Copic markers ink blending tools are much much more um, much less expensive and they give you a, a beautiful effect right so I'm using ink blending first to uh, to add some pink there along the back and you can see there I went off of my stencil slightly so you'll want to make sure that you cover up any edges of your stencil I'm using Thermoweb's pixie tape here to keep everything in place and to cover up um, the the card where I don't want that ink to show this is a great tape because it doesn't it doesn't stick right it has just enough tack to hold things down without ruining your cardstock so I'm using all the same colors as before fresh pink party pink melon citrine and emerald and we're just creating kind of loose diagonal lines all the way down this card it's gonna look so pretty I noticed a little tiny bit there that was missing some um, some color at the bottom so I went ahead and added that so you have a little rainbow in the background first the next thing I'm going to do is stamp my second cupcake onto plain cardstock using stays on again um, stays on isn't necessary but I already had it out so I went ahead and did it and then I'm going to adhere this down to the background and adhere my stencil on. I just have a piece of printer paper here that I'm using to cover up my desk space but you might have um, a mat or a glass um, a glass mat that is very helpful. We're going to use citrine on this one to start so we're going to have like a lemon cupcake and what I love about ink blending is it gives you a softness to the color. You can build up color in places so that you get a little bit of uh, shading which you'll see me do when I do the cupcake liner too. The next thing I'm going to do are the little um, the little dots so the little candy pieces on top. And I'm going to use party pink for those. A couple of them are going to mix with the yellow to give me that orangey color which is perfect. You can see there that I did the emerald green on the bottom and I focused on getting more color at the top than the bottom which makes it look really special. So just like the last card I'm going to create strips. So this is what I like to do. I cut out my quarter inch strips. I arrange them the way I like to to place them. Then I'm going to put a piece of pixie tape right on the on the top while I hold them together and then I can adhere them all in one go using a tape runner. So this is much easier than um, placing each one individually and it just it just works out really well. So it's a great tip and a great way to use your uh, Thermoweb Pixie Tape or any other low-tack tape you have on hand. 
And once you get that in place, making sure it's nice and straight, of course, then you can just use a spatula to pull off your low tack tape. And then I'm just gonna trim off those pieces, adhere my cupcake. So I have my cupcake here and I added a candle, I added the sentiment again. I did birthday love to you. The other thing that I did here was I cut out hearts from those dies which are included in the kit in the colors that I'm using. And I'm just adhering those using dimensional adhesive to all the places where the colors exist. So um, the orange heart is going on the orange in the background, the green heart is going on the green stripe so that the colors kind of stay together. Super fun. One thing I noticed was that the card needs a little bit more contrast. So I thought it would actually be fun to add some black instead. I stamped my candle with orange and then colored it in with a little bit of a water brush. But I want to add some black, so I'm going to do my sentiment in black and I'm going to do the candle in black too. And just just do that again. Because the great thing about stamping is if you don't like it the first time, then you can just go back and do it again, right? So just like on the first card, I grabbed my water brush and I'm just adding a little bit of color to that candle, I'm doing a pink striped candle, added a little bit of yellow to the top, and then I'm going to die cut that out. So instead of pulling up the last candle I did, all I'm going to do is adhere this new candle to the candle that I've already placed on with dimensional adhesive and you won't be able to know it all. So that's a great tip. Instead of ripping something up, um, go ahead and adhere it to the top. And I just love the way that looks. It pops so much more. And I'm going to do the same with birthday. I'm going to stamp that out with black ink instead and then adhere that right to the top of the pink sentiment that I added there. The very final step with this card is to add a little bit of sparkle with those sequins. Again, I'm color matching the sequins to the areas on the card that have the color. So pink goes to pink, yellow goes to yellow. It's such a fun card and I just love it with that black outline. Thanks so much for watching me create with the March 2022 Let's Stamp Together kit from Scrapbook and Cards today. If you have your kit, I hope this inspires you to break it out and use it to create some birthday greetings. But if you're not a subscriber, please click the link in this video notes to find out how you can subscribe today. Thanks so much for watching and happy creating.